What's the chance of tomorrow being Friday? Oh, I was so confused about that one. I said zero. <laughs> and what, why, but, why, why, why is it zero? Because tomorrow is Thursday. It's a zero percent right. chance it's going to skip a whole day. Does that make sense? Uh, I put a one seven percent chance. Because there's seven days, so I guess it could be Friday. Well, if I'm randomly picking a day out of the seven days of the week, yes, there is a one out of seven chance. But Roderick's point is correct. Is it true that tomorrow is Friday? Tomorrow, Thursday, no. Yep, tomorrow's not Friday. So I was going for 0%, and I wanted to kind of frame in a – intuitive way, one of the basic ideas of probability, which is 0% chance means it is not going to happen. And 100% chance means it is going to happen. And when we talk about probability, we're going to answer most of the questions as percentages. And um, you should, in real life, you should be, if people are talking about probability, this is your framework. If something is close to 0%, it means it's probably not going to happen. If it's close to 100%, it means it probably is going to happen. Now, in the middle of that, I think people are familiar with the 50% chance, right? That's the flip of a coin. Equally likely to happen or not happen. So that would be the third marker. Now, probability is difficult in the real world because we kind of exist in, in a binary way a lot of times, which means things either happen or they don't happen. But that doesn't mean that everything is 50-50 or zero or 100. There's lots of gray areas in between, and we shouldn't be surprised when things that have a 20% chance of happening actually happen because, you know, that's totally possible that that could happen, and it's not actually all that unlikely. If we see something a number of times, we shouldn't be surprised that that happens every once in a while. Okay, so we're going to frame our probability conversation in mostly two contexts which are built around tables, but I want to start with just the basic definition of probability and the way we're going to think about it, which is as a ratio. We are going to build our probabilities as ratios, and the ratio we're looking at is number of ways we could succeed over the number of total possibilities. I just, I say success because I just think a lot of times math, if you can kind of personalize it, it just sticks better. It, it works better in your brain in terms of thinking about what's going on. So um, let's just take an example. Let's say um, I buy a lottery ticket. There are um, 70 numbers. I always forget this because I don't actually play lottery tickets, but let's look at Powerball. Can't remember if Powerball has 70 numbers or 60 numbers. Oh, yay, nine ways to win. Come on. You guys know the rules? How it no, works. I try to stay away from gambling. Well, that's probably sensible. Yes. Sensible. 
This person looks happy though. Come on. Come on, they're happy. Okay, five numbers from one to 69 and then one number from one to 26. So just roughly speaking, let's just forget about the Powerball for now and say five 70s. So there's 70 numbers and then there's 70 more numbers and there's 70 more numbers and 70 more numbers and 70 more numbers. This is an approximation. What we'd really need to do, because I don't think they replace the balls, is the number gets slightly lower as we go. That's 70 to the fifth power. 70 to the fifth power is that number. And if we're looking for one specific combination, it would be one over this number. And guess what that ratio turns out to be? All right, well, they gave it to us in scientific notation. We got to get quite a few decimals here to get some real numbers out of this. Now, two points. Is this number 0%? No. No, it's not 0%. Is it close to 0%? No. A lot of zeros before you get to zero. To change a decimal into a percentage, you just have oh, to move two places. Yes. So this would be 0 0.00000000. 59%. How close is that to 0%? In other words, how likely is it that this would happen? Remember, 0% chance means, oh, 0% <laughs> chance means It's not gonna happen. Zero gonna happen. So this is not zero percent, but but it's not gonna happen. Gonna happen. It's pretty it's close. Pretty to close. So I'm sure we could get something that's more unlikely to happen, but this is pretty unlikely to happen. So the real number is more like. 69 times 68 times 67 times 66 times 65 times 26 because the last Powerball is uh, there's 26 numbers and you can do the math yourself to multiply that out and do one over that to see what the real percentage chance of winning the Powerball is. And that's not the only way to win. I can point out there's other ways that you could win smaller amounts of money. But even if you add all, everything up, it's still unlikely that you're going to win. The same logic applies to games where you're more likely to win. Let's take, well, this is, we'll not focus on gambling the whole day, but let's look at roulette. Roulette is a game where you spin a wheel and the ball falls into a hole and that hole has a number attached to it. This is a roulette wheel. For a second, I thought you were talking about Russian roulette. No, no, we're not talking about Russian roulette. My goodness. There's uh, actually, there's different roulette wheels. This has only one zero. There's also ones with double zeros. Zero and double zero. Now, can you tell without counting how many spaces there are on this board? Because we need to know that in order to calculate the probability. So I'll give you a hint. If you can find the highest number on the board, 36. Yep. There's one through 36. So there's 36 of those. And then there's the two greens. So how many spaces are there total? That's going to be our denominator as we calculate the probability here. Thirty-six spaces between red and black. So 38 spaces total, okay? So for instance, a common bet in roulette 
phase two to one is black or red. Okay. Phase two to one means if you bet a dollar and you win, you win, you get two dollars back, which means you get your dollar back and you get one dollar extra. Now, what's the probability of winning? Well, we use our same ratio 50 -50. to apply to the situation. Well, that's the point. They want you to think it's 50-50, but it's not 50-50. Why is it not 50-50? Well, let's look at the ratio. How many different possibilities are there on the board? We just agreed what that was. 38. 38. Okay, now the 36 numbers are split equally between red and black. So how many reds and how many blacks are there? Go back to the picture here. 19? No, nope. because oh, the, 30, um, the 36 numbers are split equally between red and black. Eighteen. 18. Okay. So there's 18 reds, 18 blacks. So the probability of winning that bet is 18 out of 38. And if you do 18 divided by 38, Go ahead and do the calculation yourself and round it to, change it to a percent and round it to a, the nearest whole percent. What's 18 out of 38? 5%. Uh, no, that's not right. Do 18, you said round it to the nearest what? Whole percent. So don't tell me like 35.2%, tell me 35%, whole percent. Forty-seven. 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 Point three. Yeah, over forty-seven percent. If we round that to the nearest whole percent, it's 47%. Okay, so this is how casinos make money. Because you intellectually, you think it's 50-50 and they are paying you a fair amount for a 50-50 bet, which is two to one. But in fact, it's just slightly skewed towards the casino so that you only actually win 47% of the time, which means that 53% of the time you lose, which means that they make money in the long run, right? Maybe they don't make money on you today, but they make money on the aggregate of all the people who ever bet. That's how probability works. And that's why casinos are there because they're businesses that make money. Now let's look at a different kind of probability. This is a common type of question. <clears throat> um, so let's say I have a chart. looking at experience in a certain profession and I have a bunch of people in each category and I get a little chart for you. Okay, now I'm obscuring the numbers and I want you to think about how you would calculate the probability using the definition that we set up. What is the chance, chance means probability, of picking nurse randomly that has less than five years of experience? So as you're making this, trying to solve this problem, you should be thinking first of all ratio because that's how we define a probability. And if you're building a ratio, you should be looking for success or who am I looking for over how many are there total? That's, that's essentially the ratio that you're setting up. In this problem, you have to read the graph and use the information to figure out these two numbers. 
Let me give you a minute to work on that. Of course, once you make the ratio, you should be turning it into a percentage. Okay, let's take a look. You can start with the top number or the bottom number. What, what do you want to fill in first? I want to start from the ratio and then we can turn it into a percentage afterwards. So would it be 200 over 600? I like 200 because who am I looking for? I'm looking for nurses with less than five years of experience and according to this, there's 200 of them. But 600 is not enough. I got, I got. Go ahead. Is it 1300? Good. Where'd you get 1300 from? I just added all the, uh, the bars, the boxes up. You got less than five years experience. You got 200 nurses. Between five and 10 years, you have 300. Between 10 and 15, you have 500 and so forth. Right. So that's where the 1300 comes from. And that's the total of who I'm picking from. Now the 600 looks like you came from this top number. That's not, that's just the top of the chart in this particular table, but it's not relevant in terms of how many are there total. We need to add up each individual bar. Okay, let's just double check your percentage calculation. You did 200 divided by 1300. And if you rounded to the nearest, Tenth of a percent, it would be 15.4%. If you went to whole percent, it would be 15%. There was no instructions, so it doesn't matter which one you chose. Okay, let's try another one. This one's slightly harder. What is the probability of picking a nurse with more than 10 years? of experience. Okay, need more time? Again, we need to start with the ratio. Okay, why don't you go ahead and give me the bottom still going to be 1300 because I didn't change the problem. How do I get a nurse with 10? more than 10 years of experience. So I added um, between 10 and 15 years and also more than 15 years. Good, so I just need to put these two bars together, the 500 and the 300, that makes 800. And then that 
is how I would generate my percentage. So I'm looking at about 61.5% or 62%, depending on how you round it. Okay, so that's kind of a starting point here in terms of thinking about percentages. This has some implications for polling, which we're gonna talk about in section 17, because if a polling place wants to do a good job, first of all, they have to go pick people randomly, which is a challenge, but polling companies that do it professionally, you know, have figured out ways to get random people. But then they have to kind of make sure that they're getting characteristics to line up with the actual population to make it representative, right? Because if they randomly select you know, for instance, all people who happen to live in rural areas, that doesn't represent the whole country. Same can be said if they pick people from all urban areas. So they have to kind of think about what the probabilities and the proportions are for different groups and try to make those end up matching in their final um, calculations. 